But just to um, set the stage really quick, uh, VMware TNZ Cloud Health, formerly Cloud Health Technologies, formerly uh, Aria Cost powered by Cloud Health, now got the Cloud Health branding back. We're very excited about that over at the, the TANZU team. Uh, and what we're going to be talking about today is our Cloud FinOps and optimization solution, uh, which is Cloud Health. So real quick, real going to fly through because I know we're we're bumping up against it. So we first log in. Uh, this kind of yeah, your dashboards are your cup of coffee view in the morning. Um, so they're super customizable based on the the reports that are meaningful and impactful to you. Um, but the purpose of of cloud health is to visualize your costs in meaningful and impactful ways. So when we start talking about reporting, like seeing how much you're spending on EC2, that's great. But how do we start getting into something that's a little more um, a little more meaningful, a little more impactful, a little more tangible. So jumping into our cost history report under reports, cost history, by far our most used report, we start want to start talking about what we call perspectives. And we start talking about perspectives. It's lenses to view um, data. So we have a lot of perspectives that we see people use like owner or project, application, cost center, things that are user-defined ways to group data, group, whether it be EC2 instances, S3, whatever, to make something tangible, to see who is using the, who is spending the most in the cloud or what application is spending the most in the cloud and being able to really start charging back and showing back some of those, um, some of those spends to the business unit, to the user, to the uh, application that's really impactful. So when we're in our cost history report, kind of show you the power of starting to carve up data in meaningful ways. I want to start figuring out who's spending the most, right? I want to start figuring out who is our biggest offender, who is our biggest spender in the cloud. And it, when we, I have categorized by our owner, anything with a P is perspective. So I've categorized <laughs> by owner. You can see here we have a ton of different users, ton of different uh, 192 more users. Our biggest spend spenders, Ben, is this guy right here with this blue bar. Uh, we are going to pick on Ben. So now we can start carving up data. It's good to know who's the owner, but let's start actually making meaningful moves with um with filters, with some of these perspectives. So I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to select Ben. I'm going to say, all right, show me just what Ben did, Ben is spending. Very monochromatic chart, but that's because I haven't changed the category. I'm going to say, I want to know what, what projects Ben is working on the most. And so when we do this, now we get six projects that Ben is spending money on. These are the assets. These are the instances that Ben is start, is is working with and grouping them now by project and solely focusing on what Ben is doing. I can either click. I'm not going to do it to save time because it takes a little bit to load because we're talking thousands of dollars. I can click either on the um, chart itself or I can go down here to our nice table and click on one of our um, blue hyperlinks, it takes us into a drill down. And a drill down is showing the actual instances from our AWS bill that are actually a part of whether it be our spend on the tour project for Ben in nine, uh, 923 of September. All of this, all these reports, save, saveable, downloadable, I can take these as um, as reports, I can subscribe to them, meaning, hey, I have a monthly one-on-one -on -one with Ben. I want to know what Ben is working on. I'm going to subscribe to this uh, report. I want to report on my desk Monday because I meet with Ben on Tuesday. Then I can go to Ben and say, hey, this is what you've been working on. Let's talk about where you're having issues, where you're having trouble. Um, first step is visualizing. First step is kind of the information piece. In, um, when, when we look at cloud health, it's built with inform optimize, operate in mind, similar to the, the the DOO that we've talked about, but inform, optimize, operate. So the next step is we've seen how Ben's using the money. We've seen where Ben is spending the, the money and where he's using in the clouds. Let's start making the most of, of every dollar that's in the cloud. And so then we start that, we start talking about things like right sizing and savings plans for AWS or committed use discounts, stuff like that. And so I now am in our new right sizing engine. So we have a bunch of different resources that are available uh, or instance types, EC2, RDS. We're going to stay on EC2 for now. And you know what? Um, power of our new right sizing engine is the ability to define uh, efficiency targets. So we give you as the customer the ability to define what your ideal environment looks like. Some people like to have 
a little more headroom for production in case of spike. Some people like their dev environment to run right at where it needs to be. So maybe for dev, this is up to 90%. And if we know that it goes over, we need to go under, but maybe for production, it's 60. So we have room for growth there. But with our custom efficiency targets, we give the customer the ability to define what is available to right size. And so when we first log in, we're gonna use our average efficiency targets for time, uh, last seven days. I'm gonna group by perspective and I'm gonna choose Ben so I can see exactly what um what resources and what uh what resources Ben has. So we if we take a look, Ben, you have almost twelve thousand dollars in projected savings for um for the uh instances that you are currently using. So you know what? We're gonna apply a filter. We are gonna say we're gonna do the same thing we did before on our first page, and we're gonna say. All right, Ben, I just now want the assets that are associated to Ben. And I'm going to click apply. When this reloads, you see now we have all of the instance types that are solely, uh, all the instance IDs, all the instance types that are solely used by Ben. And so when we have, we take a quick look, we have 125 recommendations with a total savings of around $12,000. And if I click in to one of these, we get a quick reference chart of, of up to three different options that we recommend going down to. And so this, this instance has only been on for a couple of days, um, but if we take a look, it never really goes above an average CPU usage of less than a percent. And there's one max CPU usage of like 22, but it's well below our average efficiency targets. We're gonna start talking about right size and uh, start talking about an opportunity to right size this we can save potentially even on just this instance almost almost 350 bucks if we go down to we have, that relies strictly on retail uh price i mean and this is not counting any sort of discounts any sort of uh reserved instances anything like that mike i believe right now it, it is purely based on the on demand cost correct yeah, correct. Yeah, some of the, the the reason why we have new here is because there's functionality that exists in the previous rate sizing reports, which is why they're still there, right? So, like in the case of Azure Virtual Machine rate sizing, for example, you're able to take into account how reservations are applied, disk support levels, premium disk support, things like that, and all of the logic that is in the previous generation reports isn't available in the new one. We have both in tandem there as well because the new one makes it a lot easier to operationalize this. Right? In addition to the up to three sizes, we'll also recommend going up in size if you are under provisioned based on your efficiency target where you expect your utilization to be. And all of this is built on GraphQL API so that you can actually get these recommendations programmatically and integrate them into your change control pipeline. And so Ben's workload is running in production. As much as we'd like him to be able to take this action now, that's not reasonable, right? He's going to have to do some due diligence, correct, yeah. verify the recommendation is valid, and then schedule it to happen You know, Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern time when he's able to actually execute that change so there's no downstream impacts to the application. So it's it's all about how do we start shifting left a little bit from a FinOps standpoint to enable customers to take the initiative and take the action to, to operationalize something like right sizing. I'm curious about the metrics you chose for monitoring performance utilization was average utilization on EC2 versus doing like 95th or 99th percentile because generally there's too many yeah, possibilities, so, so it's it can it can really twist your economics up if you are going by average. Well, average is the default, right? You can completely customize these. The example I like to give is, hey, I have a production efficiency target, and that efficiency target range is, you know, max CPU, max memory, max disk, which is file system utilization, um, you know, 50 to 80 percent, right? I don't need it there all the time, but at some point over the last 60 days when I'm analyzing my application, that's where I expect those utilization windows to dip into it, right? And if I'm not hitting that, you know, give me a few sizes to go under to decrease. If I'm going way over that, you know, give me, go from an R5 to an R5 large to an R5 2X, because I'm consistently at max CPU of 85%, right? I want to be in that, in that lower window. So there's a lot there where it's about balancing the math and what we're looking at here versus where the cut, where the 
developer, where the team, where the application teams expect their utilization to be based on their knowledge of how it's going to be operating. You do things like uh, cross-family uh, changes so that you can recognize yep. there's CPU and storage advantages, and do you detect the different the storage attachments as part of the performance profile? Because you could have the, an instance that has a suboptimal storage adapter, and so I'm just curious how many dimensions are used to make the decision around right sizing. Yeah, um, I believe EBS optimized is accounted for in the new one. In the old one, there's additional logic on top of that. But that that's a few of the things that we're bringing from the old into the new things like uh, premium disk support, max OS data disks that you can attach, RDMA support, stuff like that um, and is, is not yet fully available, but exists in the old one, which is why we still do have both there so that people can do quick double checks and make sure that they're getting as close to an optimal recommendations as they can. How I like to describe this is we're getting you 80, 85% of the way there. We're just crunching the numbers and giving you some recommendations. The contacts that you have as an application team, as a developer, as a, a DevOps team, that's going to finish that part of the story with your business contacts, being able to marry the two sets together. And even getting to this point, it's something that's really hard to do. And the customizability is something where people really find that they're able to get get that value, uh, especially when you start thinking about segmenting data. You know, I own five accounts. I want to segment that data. So only when I log into Cloud Health, I just see my data from my five accounts across the board, including in the right sizing section. And so don't have time to obviously talk about FlexWorks today, but there's a lot more beyond that to help get you closer to the desired end state from a cloud center of excellence, a cloud business office, cloud brokerage office standpoint. Uh, Kubernetes uh, on cloud and how it is visualized in cloud health. So would you be able to opt? Yeah, great question. So uh, we deploy a collector inside each cluster via Helm or manually, right? We give you a YAML template you can deploy if you just want to do one cluster here or there. Uh, what that's going to do is allow us to collect the requests, limits, and utilization for uh, pods, namespaces, and the containers themselves, the underlying services. What we'll do is allow you to visualize what you're seeing here as the new cost history report built on our Flex report engine. So this is basically a SQL-based query of the underlying cost data, distributing the cost from the clusters we identify um, through uh, the API calls we make into the actual resources and what we can see in scope of the collector itself and the nodes. And what we're doing is here a 50-50 distribution of memory to CPU. But what you're going to be able to do beyond that is see how well allocated your capacity is from a request standpoint versus what the overall capacity is in each cluster, drilling down into the namespace level and to the pod level using things like Kubernetes labels uh, to actually group things the exact same way you saw TJ do for Ben using you know EC2 metadata and S3 bucket metadata. And then from a right sizing standpoint, allowing you to tune your requests so overall your cluster can be healthier. So what we're doing is basically saying, all right, well, you're requesting 60% or six CPUs. You're using far more than that. Let's actually bump up the request a little bit so that overall things can be a little bit healthier from a cluster standpoint. We fix all of our requests. We go through a specific cluster, identify that. We're seeing that our actual utilization is over what we're requesting, but under the limit, which is good. Let's bump the request up, maybe raise the limit a hair to give ourselves some little bit more breathing room. Once we go look at all the actual containers in that in that cluster, let's go back into the EC2 right sizing report, into the Azure VM right sizing report, and then start thinking about the nodes themselves, the VMs, and how can we maybe downsize some of those nodes, reduce the overall scope of it, so we can start saving more money on the bottom line. So the Kubernetes right sizing is a lot more analogous to uh, capacity planning exercise in in ARIA operations from the realize operations, right? It's we're looking at capacity that exists and and tuning how things are configured to be more appropriate for that capacity. And the actual cost savings impact would then be based on right size in the actual in this case um, EC2 instances. Great, thank you. Just share the slide, please. Scan the QR code um, for trials and all the fun stuff. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.